News first, face to face with Shalom Benedict. National reconciliation is something that we as Sri Lankans have been looking at since the day of our independence. But since the day of our independence, we haven't been able to achieve it. In fact, as a result of not achieving it in time, we had to suffer a 30 year long war. Uh, there was the recent carnage, of course, of the Easter Sunday attacks. And uh, if we do not resolve the national reconciliation issue here in Sri Lanka, one can only imagine what the future holds for Sri Lanka in a context where the country is going through one of the worst economic crises the world has ever seen. Good evening and welcome. This is Face to Face joining us to discuss these matters and much more taking place in the political scene here in Sri Lanka is TNA parliamentarian Shanakin Rasmanikam. A very good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening to you. Thank you. Uh, Shanakin, now you've been advocating for national reconciliation for peace among all communities, equal rights for all communities for quite a long time now. In fact, your party has been advocating for the same for an even longer time period. But there seems to be no progress being made. Why is that? Well, uh, very good evening to all the viewers as well. Um, it's a very good question um, that you asked and I would like to start by saying that um, see there was an armed conflict in this country for 30 years hmm. and the armed, com armed conflict came to an end um, in 2009. 2009 but that doesn't mean that the ethnic conflict has been resolved hmm. so the ethnic conflict arose after uh, the British gave the country independence hmm. that's when the issue actually started hmm. and 75 years later uh, we are facing the same issues to date. Now, mm. I took a. Uh, my grandfather was a member of parliament in the mm. late 60, 60s and uh, late 60s and the late 50s. Mm. And I was reading through uh, one of his speeches of the Hansard. And I was thinking to myself, uh, the matters that he had raised in the 60s and the 50s are very similar to the matters that I raise now in parliament concerning mm. Batiklo. So national unity and reconciliation of, is of utmost importance and should be a priority right now, taking into consideration that the country's economy has come into these dire straits because of that, hmm. um, not, just, not just because of uh, a 30-year-old war and the, um, you know, the finances that went towards it, but the, the reason why this country has not developed uh, or the country has not reached its true potential is uh, because uh, there is no equality in this country. And we're yeah. too busy fighting amongst each other. Well, see the thing is, now a lot of people, you know, I saw Honorable Vijay Das Rajapaksha speak in Parliament earlier this morning saying that as a cabinet minister he has done so much more for the Tamil community than the Tamil politicians have done. Hmm. Now the, the that statement in itself shows how how less educated the Minister of Justice is on our issues and how what our position is because the Tamil political party, my party for an instance, we have not been part of any government hmm. in the last 25 years barring one instance where I think there was a Senate uh, member hmm. uh, from our party in the 60s that too was for a few months. Hmm. and. And there were there were a few crossovers, I well, believe. Well, crossovers are not, uh, <laughs> you know, the crossovers are not uh, part of our party, you know, after they cross over. Hmm. So, in that in that sense, we have never really had any power to resolve any of our people's issues, which is precisely why the whole question about devolution and sharing power is still very much an issue that is, uh, you know, that that people in the north and the east vote for. He said that only about two percent of the people in the north and the east. Uh, uh, have the issues that the you know politicians raise, but then why haven't uh, the people rejected our party? Then our, pa our party's election manifesto, I think, apart from a few things uh, along the lines of the economy uh, and economic uh, livelihood, and you know anything to do with finance, hasn't really changed much in terms of uh, what sort of a solution that we are trying to achieve. But but uh, but Shanikin, is the position of your party uh, that the issues of the minority communities, in this case specifically the Tamil communities, can only be resolved if the TNA comes into power or is aligned with the government or is given, you know, positions of power to work in. Is is that your party's position? No, That's the I only way that you can resolve these? No, I think first of all, you know, we don't consider ourselves a minority per se. Hmm. We are we are a people, so we hmm. are entitled to 
uh, all representation we are entitled to all the rights that okay. people uh, you know you know the the definition of a people hmm. so we are a numerical minority in terms of numbers hmm. so therefore we are not asking for a separate country hmm. we are asking for equal power to be devolved now for an example i mean to just to break it down to a common man you know if there's some law legislation that is brought into parliament that is favorable for the tamils but not so much unfavorable for anybody any other community hmm. that that law would only be able to be passed within parliament that is concerning those areas now let's hmm. say let's break it down even further let's say the northern and the eastern province to do with cattle you know hmm. that you know for cattle farming that there is a new law hmm. right that law to give them the grasslands to graze something something along the okay. lines that will only impact that area hmm. we still uh, we still have to come to a parliament then the parliament of sri lanka where you know the tamil speaking mps are you know a significant least small number so the majority of the parliamentarians are from the majority community who would then need to agree for us to resolve an issue of you know very small issues. these are not issues that are related to uh, defense or immigration or even let's say borrowing from like borrowing from a foreign country these are day to day issues issues that you know we face you know people issues that people face day to day that can you know happen with change of legislation hmm. so which is why if power is devolved you know that people can decide what's best for them within their provinces or within their you know whichever unit that they are they are from so our position is that you know why should the tamil people not have that uh, ability to decide what's best for us not not the only issues that uh, people face hmm. there are other issues that uh, you know people face that which need to be resolved and that can only be resolved if people from the, those areas have the power to decide uh, what's best for them but, but shanakin now there have been certain measures that the tna the itac now you yourself said that you took a uh, hands art from the late 60s i believe and then and, and read it and the issues are still the same uh just as much as the issues that are being faced by various communities in sri lanka are still the same the solutions that are proposed by the politicians by the leaders who represent us are also the same so speaking specifically on the issue of national reconciliation there are things that your party has tried the itac the tna there are things that the um, united national party the sri lanka freedom party have tried but all of those have failed what is your party or what is anyone in the leadership of sri lanka right now doing that is different from what has already been done well what needs to be different is that the government should be true to its reconciliation efforts which is the only thing that they haven't done in the past a hmm. ideology that's the only thing that we can change hmm. you know there is we it's not it's not like where we have been in power and we have not been wanting to uh, uh you know reach a agreement or reach consensus mm. every single government now mm. ranil vikramasinghe last year when he became president he had a meeting the day after or on the day that he was elected by parliamentarians as president he had a meeting at the presidential secretariat many issues were raised mm. uh, to date none of those issues have been resolved i so, believe his, his undertaking was to resolve the national conflict uh, before independence that was that was almost 8 months ago mm. so i mean not that i mean 10 months ago not that we had <coughs> any trust in it but just mm-hmm. like how we have tried to resolve our issues by working with every successive leader of the country mm-hmm. we tried with ranil vikram singh as well so how because so our issues have been the same our issues are not resolved and our people want those issues to be resolved therefore we still uh, you know have to negotiate uh, on those issues so and successive leaders have you know promised uh, to resolve them mm. uh, you know we can talk go back to history and look at the banda chelva pact or the dudley chelva nagam pact or any of these pacts or even mahindra rajapaksha agreed uh, you know to 13 vote plus, plus. Uh, none of these have been uh, actually none of these have actually come into existence so <clears throat> how do you blame a party that has 10 members of parliament right now you know what how can we bring about change within the parliamentary system but, but shanakin what what i'm referring to is now all of these instances that you refer to these failed attempts these failed pacts these failed deals all of those deals and agreements were with political leaders has for instance the tna or the itac for once um, at least attempted to have a conversation with the people because at the end of the day 
the leaders will come and go they can give promises they can break promises but but reaching out to the general public that's that's the true way of finding a solution to this so have has your party ever considered that well that's very that's a very valid point and i think um, there's a language barrier also in communicating clearly not with you well, exactly <laughs> I, think, I mean I think you're so one of the uh, better speakers in all three languages <laughs> in parliament but, uh, so i mean I, it's my first time in parliament uh but i mean apart from myself i think it's only honorable sumandiran uh, who could uh, converse in uh, you know singhala uh, within mm. our party as well i'm sure mr sambandhan at his during his time was able to but he's now not uh, that uh, you know active in the grassroots so you know we have tried we have worked with the, you know we have even tried to work with the young men's buddhist association to mm. try and mm. reach out but the thing is it's you know we can create awareness you know all that can be done mm. but this is about the political will and it has to come from a political le- leader like it's not a this is a national question this is a national issue mm. right so even if you look at uh, let's say countries like recently australia had a referendum where they wanted to rights uh, for the aboriginal people not rights it was more so more, to, more representation no no it was more so to say that the aboriginals were the original inhabitants oh, okay. of the country and that you know that to acknowledge that hmm. that uh, and also some representation hmm. where you know any issue any laws that are you know relating to uh, them would hmm. get a discussion at least hmm. before it's passed something like that but you know the people who voted in support of the referendum who voted against it both had people from uh, you know the non aboriginal community who are either saying we should vote for this or we should not vote for this hmm. so it should come from so we need a leader who has a backbone within the majority community who is brave enough to come out and say look this must be resolved and not just say this must be resolved take it to the people so you know ranil vikrama singh has said that this must be resolved but what has he done to take it to the people what has his uh, uh, you know i mean his cabinet ministers at least within his cabinet Mm. No, he at least within his cabinet they could have mm. made some progress but it is completely i'm saying there is no political will on this matter and mm. and it, it and just look at the examples i mean you know it's it's people get disheartened eventually i mean if we had if as a young mp i had uh, you know some sort of hope you mm. know i mean my members of my per, my party who have been mps for like the last decade or more even mm. have faced so many instances where they've met leaders of this country who have promised everything and not delivered anything so when they go into a meeting they're very skeptical they mm. go into the meeting with you know little you know with with very hesitant thinking mm. you know they are just another meeting where you know they are going to promise us things just to please india just to please the west just to please the international community just to satisfy the human rights council mm. but when i went in for these meetings starting from gotabe you know i would come out feeling that you know there is some hope mm. but it's only you know <laughs> it only happens it only becomes uh, even worse now for an example in the last few weeks the prevention of terrorism act has been used again mm. and nearly 10 people have been arrested in my district mm. and one and boy this is after the government promised on the moratorium on the pda moratorium and and in fact i'm moving an adjournment motion tomorrow which i hope the minister of foreign affairs and uh, the public secretary would respond to uh, about this pda in itself moratorium you know you know at least you know you don't respect an obligation or a commitment that you've made to your local uh you know members of fellow members of parliament at least to the european union you know you would uh, you wouldn't one would think that you know they would uh, uh not uh, you know uh, do the opposite of what they promised mm. look at the pastel land issue i've been tweeting every now and then uh, you know cattle are being killed every day and you know you're you're destroying the livelihood of poor innocent livestock farmers who don't depend on the government for anything you know they are, they they look after their cattle and they sell the milk and that's how they've been living and now you have brought in people to settle them in pasture lands encroachers have come in large numbers you know, destroying uh, the livelihood of uh, innocent uh, tamil livestock farmers so how how are we how are we to blame right how are we to blame you know when what we have done our absolute best we have gone to finally when this went through di- because we haven't been able to resolve this through dialogue we have gone to court hmm. there's a case and a, and and the mahavali has mahavali officials are lying to the uh, lying to the judiciary as well hmm. i mean they should be held in held for court or contempt of court if possible but they're doing it in such a way where it's a time buying exercise well well of course those are those are matters before the court and subject is we can't really discuss too much 
uh, and and go into detail. No, I am the petitioner, matters. so that I can I can <laughs> I'm the, as a petitioner, I'm just saying what I have gone to court about. Yeah, uh, Shanigan. Now you said that the TNA was never in a position of power. What is the highest possible position of power that the TNA has ever been in? Well, I, I think uh, you know. Let's if we were to think about it, I think just in the northern province, uh, you know, when C V Vigneshwaran was a chief minister. Well, I think there was uh, a point where the TNA was higher. Well, uh, Quite recently. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I believe it was uh, during the time of uh, President Maithripala Sirisena. How so? When the TNA was given, uh, there was a joint. Op was that during? Yes, uh, during the time of President Maithripala Sirisena, there was the joint opposition, and then the TNA was given the position of opposition leader. Our Sambandan was given the position of opposition leader. So would you agree with me if I say that that is one of the highest positions of power that the TNA has held well, in Sri Lanka? That is not a power position of power, it is the opposition leader. Opposition so, leader? Opposition, le opposition leader for the entirety of, of Sri Lanka. So that doesn't mean that we have any power to resolve issues. That doesn't mean that we are the ones with the power to... I don't know, I, I, I understand, you know, I understand. Is, what I'm saying is in terms of having power to do things, where no, you no, are you're in charge. Hmm. Where, where you, I mean, being the opposition being the opposition leader, that was also, let me correct you, was not given. It was, he was... He was, he was, yes, he yes, was definitely. It wasn't... Uh, no, 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 I'm, uh, yeah, I'm saying so, is, yeah. all I'm saying is that was the <laughs> highest position. No, well, oh, I, no. I stand corrected, yeah. not given. No, so he was appointed as the opposition leader not since the, he was the leader yeah, of the largest uh, correct, opposition group in correct, parliament. Correct. So m my question to at you is at now... At that time, even at that time, we were in the... I mean, so you are you trying to say that uh, Honorable Sajit uh, Premadasa now has the power to change things? Uh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not what I'm trying to get at. Because if you're, if when you say... A pious position of power mm -hmm. that is maybe in terms of uh, you know since the TNA has not had a higher position of power no, that's so well okay let's let's not get too uh, too technical about technical it, about my, my, it. My, my, my real let question me, to you. let me let me let me let me kind of tell you on why why I say that the Northern Provincial Council was the highest amount of power that the TNA had was because we were in a position of power to make changes hmm, hmm. you know bring in legislation but again there were you know the powers of the Provincial Council had been taken back by the central government hmm. over the last few decades hmm. you know most powers that were vested within the Provincial Council were taken back to the hmm. central government so whatever powers that uh, C. V. Vigneshwaran had at the time there is uh, criticism that C. V. Vigneshwaran didn't do enough which I agree with hmm. right which I do agree with that you know not enough was done but that is the highest amount of power that the Tamil politicians of this country have had but in Shankin, the last my, 75 years my, 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 my question and in the eastern is, province also you know the TNA has never been in uh, absolute power but Shanakin, my question to you is now when uh, Honorable R. Sambandan was the leader of the opposition, he wasn't just the leader of the opposition for the, for the north, or for the east, or for the Tamil community alone. He was the opposition leader of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, the opposition leader for the entirety of Sri Lanka. And I might, I might be wrong, but from what I saw, with what transpired in Parliament, uh, there wasn't too much being spoken about issues being faced by all Sri Lankans as a whole at the time he was at the helm of the opposition leader. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is because somebody has to take a first step. Well, you see, you know, people, people say this all the time. But just, just remember when Ranil Vikram Singha was, you know, there was a coup and Ranil Vikram Singha was kicked out of the Prime Minister's position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was Mr. Sambandan who went to court first. Hmm. He was hmm. the first petitioner, petitioner against that. Hmm. And that was in the interest of the country's constitution and the country's democracy. It was in hmm. the interest of the entire country, not just in terms of North and the East. Hmm. So, on most, I mean, if there were any, uh, you know, inefficiencies, you know, obviously, you know, that, that is something that need, need to be taken up with Mr. Sambandan. But hmm. in my opinion, you know, I mean, he has been uh, a member of parliament for the last few decades and he has been, you know, I think he has. Uh, he has um, committed his entire life for the hmm. cause of the Tamil people to hmm. win their political rights. So I think um, you know when even the even that can't be achieved. You know how would he have been able to 
uh, really, and no. it was a two-thirds government as what, well. What, what, what I'm wondering is, but what I'm wondering is, is when, it, when it comes to when it comes to these, this this issue issue of national reconciliation. I mean, we can go back and forth, back and forth about how they haven't done this, and you know, these people haven't done this, and all of that. But the bottom line is that well, if I one day become, resolved. if I one day become the opposition leader, I would do things differently. Let's let's uh, let's, let's keep it at that. Let's keep it at that. Right. So. Shanakin, speaking about you know moving forward, of course we see a lot of uh, members of parliament are uh, well above their age of retirement, and of course this is not only an issue here in Sri Lanka but across many democracies in the world uh, where youth representation is lacking. And at the end of the day, it is our future, the future of the youth, the future of the children of this country that is at stake and that is being decided upon uh, by people, of course, who haven't well, let's just say fared that well in bringing the country forward, at least in the case of Sri Lanka. So as a, a, a person in his youth and as one of the younger parliamentarians, um, do you think that we need to go about this issue a little bit more creatively? Because doing the same thing over and over again would only reap the absolute same result. Well, you see about the age of parliamentarians getting elected to parliament, there is nothing that anybody can do about it because they are being elected by the people. You know, they when people elect somebody, they know how old they are, right? But I am of the f I'm I'm of I have a firm belief that a lot of people don't believe in quotas. But I feel that a youth quota, you know, if a hmm. youth quota can be introduced hmm. with the local council elections, we know there is a quota for uh, female candidates. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, likewise, I mean, for you know, even for parliament, if we can have a youth and female quota. Hmm. Um, at least till we, you know, achieve a point where we have uh, some sort of uh, organic growth, organic growth, or at least an acceptable level of representation. Now we have 51, 50 percent women, and we only have 12 or 13 MPs in Parliament. And out of the 12 or 13 who are MPs in Parliament, if you look at look at them very closely, barring two or three of them, all of them have either a, who had uh, had a husband or a brother or a father who or was somebody or uncle who was in Parliament before them. Mm. So you know it's it's a uh, it's a problem. So I think a youth quota is important, but I think more than all that you know those are things uh, that are that are for the future that we must really look at. But you know if you look at today's context, you know right now, mm. you know right now within today's context, if you look at uh, you know we need to really bring about. I mean, Mrs. Mandiran said this in Parliament as well. There was a there was an opportunity for historic change with Daragale. Hmm. But you know that that all of it was destroyed by uh, you know President Ranil Vikramasinghe opting to take the uh, prime premiership at the time. But again, I think the next year is going to be a significant year in the lives of all Sri Lankans because, like uh, President uh, Vikramasinghe has said, it's going to be a year of elections according to his predictions, hmm. presidential and parliament. So. The decision that you know look again the decision that the majority community <laughs> takes in this country will impact the lives of all sri lankans now mm. you know somebody said you know in my my district when we do we were doing the go home gota things you know mm. all over somebody asked me uh, why there was no real uh, interest for go home gota campaigns in ampara where tamil people live so in fact i asked some of the you know our parties you know grassroots level people and said you know we should you should probably you know if you're opposed to mm -hmm. him you should do it. he said so you know we never said we won't go to, so why should we ask him to go i mean we <laughs> said go home go to in 2019 by not voting for him so you know go to all of these go to mock-ups are not to do with the tamil people but anyway that's that's besides the point but Right now, if you look at this budget, even I mean, you know, we, we are we are in a in a situation where we are discussing, debating the budget over a extensive pe extensive period of time. But I mean, I raised some questions about the uh, electricity board tariffs uh, in Parliament. Uh, you know, the state minister is not even aware of how the electricity tariffs are being uh, calculated. Mm. Maybe the cabinet minister would have been. So I think the people of this country need to, irrespective of race, class, region, you know, mm. all that ethnicity, district, all that should be aware and in the next year when there are elections they should really try and elect people who can represent them in parliament uh, better hmm. that is that is what i mean youth or elderly or i mean yes true in a in a good you know in a good in an ideal situation hmm. we should have more youth less you know you know you know po more people of uh, you know more people with more better credentials who represent people but 
I think right now at least people who represent uh, their voters mm. is what we need to really try and uh, encourage people to look for in their future elections. Thank you very much, uh, Shanakin. Much was discussed. However, uh, time is of short supply. There are many questions that have come in, but unfortunately we have no time to pose uh, them to you. But uh, do stay tuned and, and send in your questions. Hopefully we'll get them in on a future show. Thank you very much once again, Shanakin Rasamanikim, parliamentarian from uh, the ITEC, also a part of the uh, Tamil National Alliance, for joining us on our program tonight. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.